as you know, Matt, I mean, I've been in Richmond. I moved here um, in 2004. In that time, I've worked for some amazing organizations in Central Virginia. Um, all the nonprofits in this town do amazing work. And one of the things that we always talk about is um, shortening that line. And that can mean a lot of different things. It's things like feeding. It's solving housing issues. You know, we're always talking about there's a lack of affordable housing and there's food issues and there's food insecurity. Um, and there's, um, we want to make sure these kids are getting the education that they deserve. Um, so we work so hard to bring that to the schools. But at the end of the day, if a child shows up on Monday morning and still can't see that blackboard, it's great that we fed them. It's important that we, they have a secure and safe place to live, but they still can't see the board in front of them. So Imagine being that kid in that classroom who is trying to, to make a better life for themselves. They love school. Maybe they, you know, they love math or they love science or they love whatever. Every kid has something. I mean, mm -hmm. for me, I was, I was a history guy. I loved, I loved history. Uh, my, my uncle was a geography major in college and he was a professor at IUPUI in Indiana. So I think that's where I got my love of history from. And I remember he would bring me every Christmas, he would buy me books, history books. Um, which is probably an odd gift to give like a seven year old, eight year old. And his wife, he married a, a lady who, who was a French professor. Um, and she would buy me books in, in French. So I took French in high school. I can't speak a word of it now, but, but she would buy me books yeah, right, right. in French. And I remember just loving to read those things. Um, but if I didn't have glasses, what good do those books do? So I think that's why for me, I think what connects us to us is so important because. We need to take a holistic approach to how we serve our community. And so with other agencies do amazing work and they take on huge, major generational problems. Right. Um, I was blessed to work for the Salvation Army for, for eight years. And so much of what they do can be generational poverty. Um, and those are big, giant fixes. And as a community, we have to support those efforts. But at the same time, little agencies like Conexus play such a vital role we need to have a seat at that table. Um, we take a problem when we go into a school and we screen a child in a vision screening. And if that child fails the screening, we then turn around and in a matter of weeks come in and offer a free eye exam and a free pair of glasses. Um, we then come back a few weeks later and we put that pair of glasses on that kid. So we've taken a kid from a problem because he couldn't see to fixing that problem all within a span of a few weeks. Not a lot of nonprofits can say that they do that. Um, they're working on such huge generational problems, whether you're a healthcare charity, like trying to find a cure for cancer. We would love for that to be an overnight fix, but sure. we know we know it's not. Right. Um, poverty isn't an overnight fix. Hunger um, and food deserts, that's not an overnight fix. Putting a pair of glasses on a kid, and we've taken a kid who can't see and change that. We've ch and not only have we changed that problem, we've changed the trajectory of that child's life. Matt, you've been out and you've talked to these kids and you talked to some of the high school kids at Crystal Ray, you know, talk about I want to be a surgeon or I want to be a police officer or I want to be a lawyer or I want to be a musician. You can't do any of those things if you can't see the world around you properly. Um, and that's why, like for me, Conexus is just such a crucial agency. I really, truly believe that we're changing the trajectory of not just these kids, but of Richmond and ultimately the world. Because who knows when you look around and you see these, these photos of these kids, and these are real kids that we served, you have no idea who they're going to be right. when they grow up. By giving them a pair of glasses, we've now allowed them to see the world around them clearly, and they know that they can do anything that they want to do because they can succeed in the classroom, and they can succeed outside of the classroom because not every kid is going to be the Einstein. But that kid, maybe they love art. Maybe they love music. Maybe they're extremely good at sports. Mm -hmm. You can't do those things if you can't see the world around you, if you can't see the hand in front of your face. Um, and so many of these kids, we see them, and they come into the, the room and they get their glasses, and they're very hesitant when they walk in um, because they can't – so they – we open up the door and a lot of times it's in a room like this where we're doing a dispensing for the glasses. Mm -hmm. Might be 30 kids at school, might be 80 kids. It depends on the school. Every one of those kids has a vision problem that's significant enough to impact their ability to learn in a classroom. So we've seen them through our, our, our mobile clinic program and they've seen our eye doctors and then we come back with the glasses. 
And so for a lot of them, that's an exciting day because they remember us. Right. We gave them a chance to pick those glasses. They picked them out based on a style they like or a shape they like or a color they like. And they're excited. And they're also, I would say, they're, they're a little hesitant at the same time because for the vast majority of kids that we see, the first pair of glasses they ever get is from Kinexus. And they put those glasses on and right away their eyes light up um, and they smile um, and they they talk differently to their peers because for some of them, they, they've never seen Johnny sitting next to them. They know it's Johnny, but what does Johnny really look like? Right. Um, what does Mrs. Robinson, my first grade teacher, really look like? Um, we've heard stories from teachers about kids afraid to get on the bus at the end of the day because to them, it's just a big yellow blob. Um, they have no idea that, that that's a school bus. So it's a they're afraid of it. It's a fearful thing for them at the end of the day, all because they don't have a pair of glasses. Um, and before I started at Connexus, I, I took it for granted. I've worked, um, as I said, I've worked in nonprofits a long time, over 20 years. Um, before I came to Richmond, I worked for a nonprofit in New York, and we dealt with kids um, who were court ordered to come to our program. We were a GED program. Um, and for so many of these kids, vision could have been their issue, looking back. Um, did that kid go down that wrong path because they struggled in school, not because they didn't have the tools and the ability, but they couldn't see um, and it's kind of heartbreaking when you think about that we do so much for those kids, but if they don't have a pair of glasses, we haven't been holistic with that child. They have a great teacher. They have a safe classroom to go to. They have a free, you know, they themselves or someone they're on the free or reduced school lunch. So we're doing all these things for them. But if little Betty and Johnny and Timmy don't have glasses, we still, in some ways, as a society, for me personally, I feel like we've still failed that child. The glasses is one of those is one of those pieces of that holistic approach to ensure that that child can become what they want to become as they get to be an adult. And at the end of the day, if we talk about things like shortening the line and we want to tackle poverty, glasses plays a role in that. And um, it's a blessing to be able to provide free eye exams and free glasses to thousands of kids across the community. There's a great quote that's on um, a, a banner that, that hangs in our lobby and it's, it's from a school nurse who talks about how, you know, if we were to tell you that 25% of kids in our region had a, a disease, a communicable disease, we would call it a, it's odd to say this now because of COVID, but we would call it a pandemic, right? That there's, a, there's something happening that 25% of the kids are impacted. For vision, the schools that we work with and the kids we work with, it's one in three. 33%. Um, so 33% of the kids that we see through a Conexus program have a vision problem. Um, and for so many people across the community, they either don't know uh, or they take it for granted or don't realize just how big of an issue this is. So when we talk about schools and we look at things like SOL scores and we look at things like how do we grade a school, um, sometimes we might blame the school when it's simply because the kids can't see. Mm -hmm. So how can you expect a classroom of first graders to pass any sort of exam if 33% of them sitting in that classroom can't see? Um, we correct that. And it's amazing that we're able to do that in as quick of a turnaround as we do. We go in and we literally from a screening to an exam to returning with the glasses, it's about a month, month and a half. So we've taken that child who the first day of school can't see and with, by the time that child reaches the 100 day mark of school, they can see. And so we've changed that trajectory for that, not just for that child, but for that school. I mean, we had a classroom at a school we just did a dispensing event at, um, where we're literally in one classroom, in the kindergarten classroom, we had eight out of 21 kids. Wow. Right. Imagine being that kindergarten teacher, trying to teach them the basics. That's your first, that's your fundamental basic education properties, right? Is in kindergarten. Um, how can she do that? How can those kids succeed if eight out of 24 can't see? And so the other 16 can, but keep in mind, if these eight are struggling, how much time are we spending to ensure that those eight can, can, can stay up to speed when it's simply because they couldn't see, they needed a pair of glasses. Um, and we hear from the teachers, we hear from the schools, the difference that it makes in these kids' lives. We've taken a child who maybe didn't love to read not because they didn't want to or they didn't have the ability, but why would you want to read if it gives you a headache? Why would you want, want to read if everything's blurry? And keep in mind, these kids, some of them don't even know what they don't know. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I mean, I know when I take my contacts out, man, I can't see, but I'm 45. Right. If I was five, I would think that's just what the world looks like. Um, that tree, there's no leaves on that tree. It's just a big green lollipop looking ball. But it's really, there's leaves on the tree. And when we put those glasses on, so many kids will say, I never knew that tree had leaves on it. Or we've had kids look up at the ceiling in their classroom and go, I never realized the ceiling tiles had dots on them. Or they look at the school clock um, and they maybe they can tell you where the hands are, but they can't tell you what it's pointing to. Right. Um, and so they look at that clock and like, I never realized there's lines on that clock. Because all they've ever seen is a big blurry something on the wall that maybe they can tell it's three o'clock based on the position of the hands, but they never really knew it was pointing till three o'clock. Um, and it's crazy. It's such a simple fix, something that we take for granted. I just go to my eye doctor and I can get a pair of glasses. Um, for so many of these kids, it's access to care. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't. They may be eligible for things like Medicaid, but getting to a provider might be might be difficult. Um, we were out in Cumberland, Matt, you were with us, um, and they were telling us the closest provider could be an hour away. Um, those families are stretched in so many different directions. Vision might not be at the top of their priority list. So one of the things that we do at Connexus is we want to provide that service and bring these free eye exams and free glasses to the kids who need it. But also, I like to think of it as we're teaching healthy habits. So if you're that child now who we've just put glasses on, you want to wear your glasses right. because... And we'll see it too. We'll have kids who will come into the classroom and they'll be like, I don't, especially as they get older, I don't need glasses. I see fine. And then we put the glasses on them. And when our opticians go to even, even fit them properly and try to take them off the child's head, a lot of them will grab onto the glasses because it's the first time they've seen things clearly. Um, and it's an incredible feeling for them to know, man, this is what things are supposed to look right. like. Right. Um, and so I really do feel that um, Connexus does change lives. I'm convinced of that. We're actually, we're actually in the process of putting an optical lab in, in our building here. Um, but right now, we still do send everything out um, to the big lab in Florida that we partner with. Okay. Um, and I think long run, we'll, we'll still do that just because of the sheer numbers. But by having an optical lab here in our building, a lot of times we will get a, a teacher who will say, um, you guys just came and you gave glasses to, to little Matt. He's in third grade at blah, blah, blah school in Chesterfield County. Um, He broke his glasses. He lost his glasses. Can he get a second pair, that one pair that we can leave here and a pair that he can take home because sometimes they lose them at home on the weekend? Well, when that happens now, we have to send it to a lab in Florida so that there's a delay in the return. By having a lab here, these kids who really need their glasses, because, Matt, there's some kids that are plus three, plus four, plus seven, um, minus sevens, um, you know, for some of these kids, it might be just a minor correction, but for a lot of these kids that we see, there, sometimes there are major, major issues going on with, with their eyes. Mm-hmm. So not only have we put glasses on them, for a lot of them, we actually refer them out for, for additional care. Um, maybe they need to have an ophthalmological visit. Um, maybe they need to see a different uh, optometrist because we don't do dilation. Right. So um, just by seeing that, too, for a lot of these kids, they've never seen an eye doctor until Connexus Optometrist shows up in their building. Um, and some of them are kindergarten, some of them are are in 10th grade, Matt. So there's kids who are literally in that time of their life where they're looking forward to things like college and independence and getting a license. They've never had a pair of glasses. And yet somehow they've made it all the way to 10th grade. Maybe they've struggled the entire time mm-hmm. because Connexus wasn't around. So the goal is, is that over the course of time, once we catch up all these cohorts, there shouldn't be kids in 10th grade in greater Richmond who have seen an eye doctor at the first time because it connects us because we've seen that kid when they are in first grade. Mm-hmm. So that's the long-term goal of the Connexus program. Um, but there's thousands of kids across this community who we can't serve because we don't have the resources to serve them. So we need, that's why Gift of Light is so important because we need people to give. So through the Gift of Light campaign, $10 is an eye screening. So let, let me talk a little bit about the eye screening because this is something I never knew either um, until I started at Connexus. So the state of Virginia, And I think a lot of states across the country view eye screenings as such an important thing that they've actually written it into state code. So it's actually state law. It's in the, it's written in the code of the, of the state of Virginia that eye screenings are mandated. So kids in certain grades have to have screening done in their school. So Connex has developed our Visio Check program um, in partnership with local schools where we go in there and we provide a digital eye screening. Um, 
which in some ways takes the place of the traditional wall chart screening that a nurse that a school nurse could do. So, for example, at a at a at a school, it may take a school nurse three months to get through the entire school because they're extremely busy. Um, and now with COVID, they're even even more busy. So we can come in and do a digital eye screening and do an entire school maybe in a day which may have taken weeks or months. So we've sped up that process. At the end of that screening, every child who gets a referral, or if they pass, we provide paperwork to that school nurse that the nurse can then turn around and send home to the parents so that they know, A, that their child got screened, B, that their child either passed or was referred from a screening. And the referral could be for all sorts of reasons. Um, Locally, for the schools we do our mobile vision clinic, which is Chesterfield, City of Richmond, uh, Cumberland County, and Petersburg, Anyone who gets a referral has an opportunity to get a free eye exam through our mobile vision clinic program. So then when that referral is sent out, the parents get notified that, hey, Connexus will be back on November 15th to do an eye exam. So then that family has an opportunity to get that free eye exam. So we come in, we do the exam, um, we provide the child a pair of glasses that they can pick. And the one thing that I love about Connexus is we have hundreds of frames. We have Nike, we have Lacoste. I mean, we have all different sorts of styles because, listen, we could give every kid the same pair um, like you get in the military. You, right. know, you get two, here's your choices. It's black or brown. Um, you know, we offer thousands of different types of styles and colors and shapes and sizes. So because we want the child to want to wear them. So our opticians are able to ask that kid, what's your favorite color, pink? Let's get you a pink pair. Oh, your favorite color is purple. Your favorite color is green. Oh, you love Nike. And so our opticians um, are incredible with kids. And they're able to find that pair that that child wants to wear because that's the key part, right, is we could give them a vision screening. We could give them an eye exam. But if that child's not wearing the glasses, we've screened him and we've given him an eye exam. I like to think about about if if you were in the hunger space. And you do a study and it says, hey, in Richmond, there's 100 hungry kids. And then you walk away. You didn't solve the problem. Right. So we, through our screenings, we find those kids. Through our exam, we fix that problem through our, and then through our dispensing. Um, so it's just incredible that we're able to do that. So the Gift of Light campaign is a campaign we launched a few years ago. Um, when we first did it, it was a partnership where we had illuminaries. Um, the idea was that for, for kids sitting in a classroom in Richmond, if they can't see the board, they also can't see the lights of the season. Um, and everyone knows Richmond is famous for our tacky lights. So to call it the gift of light campaign, that's what I talk about when we talk about these kids. We're, we're helping them outside the classroom too, because it's great that they learn. We want them to learn math because they can see. We want them to learn to read, but we want them to appreciate the wonders of the season. So that's what the gift of light campaign is that these kids around the holiday season that we've given glasses to this year, they're going to wake up some of them on Christmas morning for the first time ever seeing presents under a tree clearly. I mean, think about that. I mean, how incredible is that, that it's a gift that we can give these kids to provide them that, that gift of sight, that gift of, of healthy vision. Um, and so for $10, it's a screening um, for a child. For $50, it's a pair of glasses and a free eye exam. Um, to no cost for that, that child or their family, $50. Try going to your optometrist and getting a, an eye exam and a pair of glasses for $50. You can't do it. And we're able to do that here in Connexus because of the support of the community. But there's thousands of kids that need help. And this year, because of COVID, we're actually seeing more kids because we launched our COVID catch-up program to try to get these kids who we missed in screening because of virtual learning, try to get them caught up. So we need help now more than we've ever needed before. We have one full-time optometrist, we have two contract optometrists, and one who I believe you're actually going to interview, he actually drives down from Northern Virginia, um, loves working with kids, um, had heard about Connexus, I think, through uh, something we had done through um, a society or an association. He got information about Connexus, and he's been working with us now since the start of the school year. He comes down for two days a week and actually spends the night in Richmond um, and then works on Thursdays and Fridays with us. But we can't do it. None of us, I'm not an optometrist. I'm not an optician. Um, We need help. We need, if you're an optometrist who wants to get involved and you want to do one day a month or one day a week or your practice to adopt one school in the city of Richmond or one school in Chesterfield or a school in Petersburg, um, let us know. We'd love to to talk to you. Um, And if you're in that line of work, you understand the importance of vision. So many of us, I think, take it for granted. And I know I've said that already, but I think it's true. I mean, I remember being a kid um, and just one day being at my parents' eye doctor 
And I remember going with them when they would get exams for whatever reason. Um, Cause you could be left to humble. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, daycare, whatever it was. I remember being with my, with my mom and dad. Um, and this is in upstate New York, so it's in Utica. And, um, the uptown church was on Tennessee street. And I remember being fascinated because it was like this old, old building. Um, and when you're a kid, those things, it, I think it creeped me out probably because <laughs> you know, when you're a kid and you see these, it was like uh, the brownstones or whatever in, in upstate New York and Utica, New York. Um, and I remember, and it, I just remember being in that building and then like the next year being in that building and sitting in a chair in an exam. So something between that point and, and that point, I don't know if I failed an eye chart screening or if I was squinting, I was probably in like fourth or fifth grade. And I just remember getting a pair of glasses. Um, and thank God I did. Um, thank God I did because I was able to to be successful in a classroom because of that. I mean, if my parents didn't have the means to provide that for me and an agency like Connexus didn't exist, I really don't know what would have happened to me or my brother who also got glasses. I mean, we both have had glasses pretty much since we were kids. So now I just, I, I take it for granted. Um, we all do. I mean, so many of the people, Matt, who are going to watch your show or, you know, watch your weather forecast or watch Channel 8 are going to be putting on a pair of glasses when they wake up in the morning or like me putting in their, in their contacts when they wake up in the morning. These kids need that, but don't have the ability or the means to make that happen. Connexus does that. We go in, we provide that for them, um, these eye exams. And I can't imagine anyone watching right now who would be able to be successful at their office job or their blue collar job, or if they drive trucks for a living or whatever it is, if you can't see and you have poor vision, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard in the world to, to get ahead um, if you struggle because of your vision. Um, and so connects us. That's what we do every day. Um, we take that barrier away for thousands of kids across Richmond. Typical year pre COVID, we would, we would screen, for example, kindergarten. This year we're screening kindergarten and first grade because a child who was in first grade this year would have been in kindergarten last year, but they were learning virtually and we may not have screened them. So for a lot of our programs in schools, we've actually doubled our numbers. So in a normal school, we might only see kindergarten third and fifth. Now we're doing kindergarten first, sometimes second, sometimes third, and then fifth. And then in high school and middle school, it's the same thing. So we're trying to get these kids caught up because if you imagine if you were a child who needed glasses a year ago, but we missed you because of virtual learning, you still need glasses. And in some ways you need the glasses even more than you needed them before because your eyesight's gotten worse. So with COVID catch up, we're catching these kids up. Um, but the hope is now that we've grown that program, we don't want to have to scale back. We still want to be able to serve the same number of kids, maybe not through the same schools. We want to add schools. So we want to continue what we've done in Chesterfield Title I schools. We want to continue what we've done in Petersburg and in Richmond and Cumberland. But we have schools who are asking for assistance that we can't serve, um, who we screen, but we can't provide those free eye exams and the free glasses. And the only reason why we can is because of limited resources. So if, if you donate, you can ensure that we can see more kids. For every donation we get, it's a child who we're able to, to see and put glasses on.